Hi, we're Ben and Ben. Uh, we're a nine-piece um, folk pop band based here in Manila, Philippines. Um, we'll introduce ourselves. So I'm Miguel, and I'm a vocalist and acoustic guitar and also write songs. And I'm Paolo, and I write songs, uh, sing, and do acoustic guitar. I, um, I'm Kaifer. I play the violin. I'm Potch. I play the electric guitar. I'm Agnes. I play the bass. I'm Pat. I play the keyboard. I am Tony. I'm one of the percussionists and I'm, I also sing backing vocals. Hi, I'm Jam. I play the drums. Hi, I'm Andrew. I also play percussions and do some backing vocals. Great. <laughs> Okay, and we um our band uh, a bit about our band. We formed in 2017 um as a nine-piece band. And the reason why we're nine in the band is because we really want to maximize um what we can get out of the the dynamics of being in a band, especially in, in live performance and and in the creative process as well of, of writing and producing songs. So it's been a it's been a crazy journey so far. Um in the Philippines and in the uh, in the places that we've been to, and uh, this is actually the first time we're headed for the U.S. So um, it's a milestone for us, definitely, in our fifth year as a band. Right, and you guys are currently the number one band in the Philippines, and yeah, starting this September, like you guys mentioned, you guys are going to be heading here for your first ever North American tour. So congratulations to you guys. I'm personally so excited to see you guys. Um, so I want to know, has this always been the dream to, you know, one day hold concerts globally? I know you're big in the Philippines, but to, you know, reach into the international stage and then burst into the American music industry. Uh, did you guys have a dream or expect any of this? Are you guys nervous, excited? I guess it's always been a dream of ours, but uh, we never really expected that uh, it would, you know, get this far. Because uh, I think uh, from day one, uh, I don't know, we, we tend to do things a bit differently. But I think that's what comes with really just being yourself, that uh, sometimes... Uh, it's really what starts as a struggle to fit in eventually becomes uh it, it becomes such a nice thing once uh you just come out for who you really are and i guess for us that's always been the story and so to try and do that and get this far is something that uh is surreal for us still until now and since we're here anyway we're just going to give it our best shot and try and get, uh, you know, a bigger audience to listen to our music and connect with people. Because I think that's the bottom line of all of this for us, to connect with people through the stories of our songs. Right. Yeah. And just going back, I think the first song I've ever heard from you guys was of uh... Katang Isip, and you know, I immediately fell in love. I mean, it's heartbreaking, but it's also very soothing. Your music, um, it narrates human experiences of love and loss that many people relate to. So I also want to know what your music process is like, you know, who composes the music and who writes the songs? And I mean, are all these based on your personal experiences? I would say that uh, definitely for us, uh, most, if not all, of the songs are really based on our personal experiences. But it's you know, it's 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 a different, it's a different uh, side of of our lives for every song. Like it's not all about our our experiences in love or 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 having our hearts broken. Sometimes it's just about, uh, like recently, it's been the struggle with coping in the pandemic. Um, it's about uh, struggle in general. It's also, and then, and then uh, we also have songs about uh, more, I would say, social political themes uh, like women empowerment. Uh, but our process is 
usually the songs uh, are written by myself and and Miguel, but that's really at most one half of of the art because uh, the other half begins when we all uh, jam it or ideate as a band, and that's where the magic really happens. So. I think the thing that we've always loved about um, being in a band is you you really inevitably learn by experience a lot about empathy. Um, because when you kind of like um, have a shared creation with with eight other people, you can't do that without empathizing with what the experience of, of the song is about, right? Like if it's a heartbreak song, Inevitably, at some point, you'll also feel the pain of what what the writer has gone through. For you to lay down that instrument, or for you to lay down that that vibe that the song is looking for. And I guess, without going into too much detail, that's what our creative process is like. Um, and I guess the bond that we've had over the past years really, really flows into the music that we create. That empathy, that shared. Um, emotion bottled up into a song cool so yeah i know that some of your music taps into societal issues like you guys mentioned also like mental health and you've also expressed your support for women empowerment and the lgbt community through specific songs so i want to know when you create these songs besides it being for your fans do you Think of them as sort of your political stances or statements to, let's say, the Philippine government, or maybe to those who oppose the LGBT community, or maybe people who you know don't see value in women empowerment. I guess uh, eventually it it stands for something, but what we're really doing is uh, we're just sharing our beliefs and our thoughts on these topics, and it just uh, happens to resonate with uh, people who are fighting for the same thing. And I guess that's where it begins. Uh, but with with songs, as with any type of song, and with any theme of song, that it really just has to have your raw and honest uh, uh, thoughts and feelings about something, even with uh, themes such as women empowerment and uh, and good governance, and all the and mental health it's really just what what uh, our sentiment is and it just flows from that i guess right so i guess these pieces you know can be considered your advocacies um were you ever worried about you know releasing specific songs like have you encountered fans friends family members who might not agree with specific songs and how do you respond to them well, we <laughs> we recently released a music video um, for Paninindigan Kita and, it, and um, Agnes and I were the lead stars. Wow. Oh, <laughs> we were yes, the, you were. We were the actors. Um, well, it was such a strange process for the, well, for the both of us in particular because um, we aren't very loud on social media about the relationship so we were kind of worried about um how people would receive it like particularly my parents her parents um and everyone else but um what really made us say yes to doing the whole thing is the potent it's is its potential to um to spark something in the gay kids you know how you know um representation um queer love yeah like if if us doing the music video will help kids accept themselves for who they are then yeah let's do it yeah i love that thank you for that um yeah i hope you know you guys continue doing that because ultimately that's what makes ben and ben you know music that is passionate real and relatable to many Filipinos and, of course, like the world. All right, so besides the debut of Ben & Ben's North American tour, you guys have other special news. Ben & Ben will be releasing their 
latest English song, The Ones We Loved, right? Well, the title. Uh, tell me about this. Uh, what's the inspiration behind the song? And, you know, is this somebody finally moving on from a breakup? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, no, I, I'd say that uh, The Ones We Once Loved are the song that we're about to put out. Um, it's unique in the sense that it's, well, it's basically a song about closure, but uh, it's different in the sense that in order to have a certain piece, you have to let time pass first for you to be able to process things and have conversations that haven't happened yet. And I guess it's more of um, the actual processing and and like internal closure happened like a long time ago, but it's really more of just coming out in, in a song just recently. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's what, what the song is about. It's it's about closure and the things that uh, you wanted to say to someone, but you never got the chance to say it. So yeah, that's that's what the ones we once loved is about. And I heard that this will be released with a music video, right? I haven't seen it, but can you also tell me something about that? Yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, well, it's a it's an interesting uh, concept, and it's <laughs> no, it, it's it's real. That's I mean, even if uh, if the story is something that was written by the director, uh, like the inspiration behind it is it's pretty real. Uh, <laughs> I I'm not sure if we're allowed to. Yeah. So the the thing about <laughs> how real, how real, real it is is, is uh because basically my ex and I are friends and we're starring in the music video. So wow, that's huge. That's how real yeah. Yeah. That's how real guess, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's how real it is. I because I guess uh what we wanted to show with this uh, music video and with this project is that it's possible. I mean, it's not accessible to everyone, but it's possible to have that kind of peace with your past and move on with, uh, with the right kind of closure. I mean, that's what the song's about anyway. So we thought, why not take it all the way to the music video? So... <laughs> Yeah, it's that's basically awesome. just real real emotions uh and what you see is what you get and it's also like that with the song i guess like if you read the lyrics of the song what you hear that's that's basically the whole story of of the experience behind uh the songwriting so all right, so now that you guys are going to be on tour in North America and Canada, uh, can we also expect more English songs from Ben and Ben? Maybe a hint at like uh, an album of all English songs. Uh, definitely, that's uh, that's I guess the direction that we have in mind now. But uh, I guess we'll roll with it. Like we'll see. I think we'll know what the right thing to do is in terms of uh, what language to release our songs. Because definitely the goal is very clear, which is we want to reach more people with our music. Um, but there's, we also know that sometimes, like we, sometimes we get messages that uh, they love uh, listening to our songs in Filipino, even if they don't understand the words because we provide translations on YouTube. Um, we're not sure yet, but for now, that's the plan. For now, that's the plan. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, well, I think we don't have enough time left. I was gonna ask you guys to sing, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah, we can. I think we can. <laughs> Probably a chorus. Yeah, that's okay. That would be great. 
any song that you guys want. We can sing, we can sing the, that song. That song. Uh, the okay. one too much cool. One, two, two. So I apologize for coming into your life just to break your heart to pieces and then leave you in the night. I try my best to stay by your side, but who knew the rolling seasons would reveal that sometimes we aren't meant to be the one. So goodbye to the ones we once loved. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm like totally fangirling right now. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I really appreciate Thanks for having us. And again, it's an honor to meet all of you guys, even just virtually. Thank you for your time, your music. And you know, I'll see you guys this October when you do come here for your concert. Yes, we'll see you when we get there. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs>